All right, we're going to configure an ingenious wireless access point. This happens to be the N300, but they all pretty much get configured the same way. So it shouldn't matter which model you have. So let's start by opening up our control panel. And from there, we're going to open up the network and sharing center. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see change adapter settings. So just go ahead and click on that link. Now you, got, you may have a bunch of different adapters here. I probably have more than most because I have a lot of different uh, things I get into. Uh, but look for the one that says either local area connection or Ethernet, something like that. And uh, it has a blue connection that shows that it's all connected up and ready to go. So right-click on that and choose Properties. And we're going to change the property so we can communicate with the wireless access point. So let's go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom to where it says TCP version 4. So click on the properties or just double click on it. And we see the IP properties uh, that we have. Now in this case I've got a static IP address. However yours might be set to obtain an IP address automatically. Doesn't really matter. Uh, if you want to you can we can just do it right from here and go put in 192.168.1.10 and then hit the tab key and that's all you need to do. You don't need to fill out anything else for this. We can undo this all later. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and so show you what to do if you have a static IP address. So if you have a static IP address like this, click on the advanced button and then click add where it says IP addresses. From here we're going to put in the same address we just did. Hit the tab key and that's exactly what we want for the mask. Click add, click OK and click OK. So now we actually have two different IP addresses on our network if you had a static IP. So we, now what we want to do is we want to get into the access point itself. So we're going to put in 192.168.1.1 and by default it will bring up our access point which has already been plugged in. By default the username and password is admin. So admin, admin. Click login, and now we are logged in. So let's go ahead and configure. I'm not going to keep it that password. Uh, so let's go ahead and configure this guy. Uh, first thing you want to do probably is to change the password uh, because changing the password will obviously keep you from getting hacked. So you click on administration on the left-hand side. The username admin is fine. Just go ahead and put in whatever password you feel comfortable with. recommend at least eight characters like I just did. Save and apply. Okay, so now we've reset our password. And if you want, you can log off and log back in. But just in case you type the wrong password, it's probably a good idea to just open up a different web browser to the same place. Make sure you can log in before you log out of this session. That way, if you fat fingered your password, then you can fix it before you lose this session. All right, let's go over to where it says wireless and it says wireless network. All these other th the defaults that are on here are just fine. You don't need to make any other changes with the exception of the password and over here where it says to uh, uh, under wireless network, your default SSID. This is the broadcast name that you're going to broadcast out to the world so they can connect to your access point. So go ahead and click edit on that one. You can see that it was already checked that it's enabled. It's the only one checked that it's enabled. Uh, by default, the VLAN ID is one that's perfectly fine. If you don't want people to see uh, your name when they browse wireless networks, then check the suppress SSID and you'll have to manually type that into your phone or your computer or your tablet. We're going to go ahead and broadcast it though. Uh, if you do station separation, this is a much more complex uh, setup. You have to have a special switch, uh, routing, all that kind of thing to make this work. We're not going to do that, so just ignore that. Uh, so let's go ahead and, that's, that's by the way, if you want to have a guest network separate from your internal network. Let's go ahead and change your SSID to be whatever it is you want. We're just going to go ahead and say it's test. Uh, security mode, we're going to want to enable that because uh, if you leave it disabled, people will go and hack things and it'll be your IP address. It'll be you're the one they, they come after. So the strongest one is going to be the WPA2 PSK. Even though it's not the one on the bottom, it actually is the best one for you. So let's go ahead and choose WPA2 PSK. Now the WPA2 is similar to the PSK one except for it, use, it can use a certificate, it can use MAC addresses. Most people aren't going to want to do that. So let's just choose this one. It's reasonably secure. It's got the best encryption as well. 
All right, so under encryption, if you keep TKIP and AES, that will allow you to go backwards compatible with older devices that use the uh, WEP protocol, which is wired equivalency protocol. I don't recommend doing that because WEP is easy to hack. So let's just go ahead and change that just to AES only. Now go ahead and type in your passphrase. And I'm just going to type in hello as my passphrase, which of course is not a good passphrase. So don't uh, duplicate that. And then go ahead and click Save. All right, now you're going to get a message that says, yeah, they have at least eight characters. So that's nice of them to do that. So we'll just go ahead and put in hello, one, two, three. All right, so that is it. We can now go to our phone or tablet or computer with anything with a wireless connection on it. And we can go ahead and uh, log in and it will connect to our network. Now you have to have a DHCP uh, server which automatically hands out IP addresses if you don't want to do static IP addresses. I have other videos on that you can check out. If you have uh, Comcast or other ISP, they usually come with a box that have, has DHCP already on it and turned on. So you may not actually have to do anything. It may already work. Test it out first before you go to a lot of trouble and uh, you know see if it works for you. And if not, then you can go ahead and, and start uh, investigating getting a DHCP server to work for you. So that is how you set up an ingenious wireless access point.